Hi there, in this video we will be reviewing this newly released Sabre rope friendly recovery hitch. Four wheel driving and recovery, the two go hand in hand. No matter how capable your vehicle or how skilled of a driver you may be, sooner or later you are going to get stuck. And when you do, you will need a means of being recovered. Get stuck, get stuck, get stuck. Now recovering a stuck vehicle is inherently dangerous. Depending on the type of recovery, there will likely be huge forces and energy involved. Additionally, the stuck vehicle will in most cases need rated recovery points as well as rated recovery gear. Over the last 15 years, we have seen a number of new or improved recovery gear, which help to reduce the risk and danger associated with vehicle recovery. Products like Max Tracks, made of lightweight composites, replacing heavy steel sand ladders, steel winch cable replaced with lightweight synthetic rope, steel shackles replaced with soft shackles, pulley blocks replaced with alloy rings, and more recently snatch straps replaced with kinetic rope. Now each of these products has their pros and cons, but generally the newer gear tends to be lighter and safer. In the majority of recovery situations, the stuck vehicle will require recovery points, front and rear. Front recovery points tend to be very specific for each vehicle, and may also depend on the bar work fitted to the vehicle. This vehicle here is fitted with an ARB bull bar and an ARB recovery point rated to 8 tonnes, and for more information on this, check out the video in the link above. However, with rear recovery points, most vehicles fitted with a tow bar can accommodate a rated recovery point by using a rated recovery hitch like this or this. Now before we discuss these recovery hitches, in an emergency situation, if you have nothing else, you could use a hitch pin. However, you do run the risk of damaging the snatch strap or kinetic rope, as it can abrade against the hitch receiver. And the hitch pin may also bend, and you may not be able to remove it. So continual use is not recommended. Also, never use a tow ball for recovery purposes. It is extremely dangerous. They have been known to break off and cause serious damage. They simply can't handle the high forces involved during a recovery. Here is a traditional recovery hitch. It's made of steel, has a working load limit of 5 tonnes, and is commonly used with a 4.75 tonne rated steel bow shackle. Now this particular hitch can be rotated by 90 degrees, allowing it to be used for angled pulls also, something I believe is essential, especially if you have to hand winch a vehicle sideways like I once had to. And here is a new and improved recovery hitch, the Sabre Rope Friendly Recovery Hitch. Yes, it is made of steel and can also be rotated for side recoveries. However, there are some key differences. First and foremost, it is designed primarily for soft shackles. The eye has no sharp edges, unlike a traditional recovery hitch, we can damage and cut a soft shackle. I like the fact that it's been designed around the concept of a lifting eye bolt, which is well proven and widely used in the lifting and rigging industry. And this recovery hitch is incredibly strong. It has a working load limit of 5 tonnes, and has been tested to over 35 tonnes without failure and this gives it a minimum factor of safety of 7. In fact, you're more likely to shear the hitch pin or even pull a whole tow bar structure off the vehicle before breaking this recovery hitch. I believe its strength comes from the way it has been manufactured. It is fully cast, then heat treated, and then shot peened. Because its shape is formed at the very start during casting, it helps to maintain the integrity of the steel's grain structure at a molecular level. In my opinion, this is where a machine recovery hitch, be it steel or alloy, falls short. A machining operation occurs after the shape forming process, and it consequently disturbs the grain structure by physically cutting into it. It can also introduce sharp changes in geometry, which are susceptible to high stress concentrations and can ultimately lead to failure. After casting, this recovery hitch is then heat treated to bring about desired physical and mechanical properties, and then it is cold worked by shot peening. 
Now, shot peening hardens the surface, improving its resistance to fatigue and resistance to stress corrosion. It also gives it this nice orange peel texture. I also like that the working load limit value has been cast onto this recovery hitch. It is clear, legible and can't be easily removed. Unlike a traditional recovery hitch, which usually has a printed working load limit value. In fact, on my one here, you can no longer see it. Now I know what this recovery hitch is rated to, but how about someone who may have to use it in a recovery situation? Should they take my word for it? Furthermore, I also like the compact size of this recovery hitch, the minimal impact it has on the vehicle's departure angle, and the fact it can also accept a rated steel bow shackle, if for any reason there was a need to. And finally, I really like the fact that this product was designed and tested right here in Melbourne, Australia. I'm all for supporting Australian companies, who I believe supply some of the best recovery gear in the world. So if you are after a strong, safe and inexpensive rear rated recovery point for your vehicle, it's hard to go past this Sabre recovery hitch. I purchased it for just under $100 and it has definitely impressed me so far. So I hope you found this video informative. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.